Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Today, I'm going to check out the industrial Ethernet switch from Cisco, the IE2000, and we're actually going to take a look at specifically right here, the alarm terminals. How can we take this switch that just does switching things, and when there's a fault, we actually want to get a physical real-world notification, i.e. turning on a light, turning on a buzzer, something of that nature. Uh, in my example, I have a pretty simple circuit set up, two LEDs, red and green, and a, uh, an external power supply, uh, so we can get this bad boy up and running and do some real-world, you know, use case uh, type of, uh, you know, type of examples. So anyway, let's dive in. If you have a switch and you want to follow along, by all means, I'm going to have some config on the screen. Uh, I'll have it in the comments section as well. But uh, hey, thanks for watching. Go ahead and plug that subscribe button if you're uh, into this type of stuff, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. All right, to get started, you can see that I have a IE 2000 series switch. I have my console cable connected, power, and an uplink. I'm just using a copper port for the uplink. I also have a number of uh, wires connected to the inputs and outputs for alarms. Uh, and I have a 9 volt battery powering the alarm light. Now this alarm light is set uh, when the switch is off and you know we're using the alarm relays on the switch the light is still going to be red. So what we're going to do first of all is come over to the switch. I'm going to go into configuration uh, config T mode. Uh, we want to actually set that to be green basically meaning that the um, you know the system's up and running the most basic setting. So if the switch is off, the light will actually revert to being lit red, and the green light will mean, hey, we're good, we're, uh, we're powered on, we're good to go. Uh, and this is the uh, alarm, alarm relay mode energized command. So you can see there that now the LED is green. By the way, the wiring for this, I'm not going to go into it in depth here, but uh, essentially, the relays, uh, the first sets of pins, there's uh, an input, which is the red wire, the, the power, and there's a normally closed terminal and a normally open terminal. So normally closed is what drives the red LED. Uh, so when the switch is powered off and everything, that relay is normally closed, meaning current can flow. So the red LED is on. Uh, normally open is uh, what we would use in the... Uh, you know, the, the case of um, uh, th this LED where we want it to be, you know, disconnected. There's no power powering the LED unless the switch is in good health and it's essentially holding that contact into the on position. So anyway, that's uh, that's the high level on it. There's also some alarm, physical alarm, dry contact inputs here. I just have some wires uh, kicking around here that we can use later to connect that. So that's uh, that's the high level of the wiring. So jumping back to the CLI, uh, one of the important things to do is to know if there's a loss of connectivity. So uh, from a connectivity perspective, we have a connector here. If I disconnect that, you notice nothing changes. The LED is still green. Technically, I mean, we now have a problem, right? We don't want that to be the case. So what we'll do is we'll let all the logs scroll by there and we'll come in and create an alarm profile. Now there are, um, there is a default alarm profile. And if I do do show run and look for section um, alarm profile, we'll see that alarm profile, right? So it's the default. Uh, Basically, it's only going to alarm if an interface is not operating. And this is a like a failure state. The SFP has died or the port is bad, something to that effect. So we actually want to know a little bit more than that. So I'm going to create a new alarm profile and alarm profile. And uh, for lack of creativity, we'll call it test one. If we come in here, we see the options. So we have a couple options here. We have alarm. And this will, this will allow us to call out the specific alarms that we want. Uh, I'm going to pick actually all of them, except for the FCS error. Uh, in this case, FCS error would be like a lot of garbage data coming across and uh, things of that nature. Probably not a bad thing to have in place as well. But uh, in this case, I'm just going to go for link fault. So this would be physical 
network issues, non-forwarding. Uh, not forwarding, this would be, <clears throat> you know, the link is up, but there's no data passing. So in the case of, I don't know, maybe a spanning tree block, this would be, um, you know, uh, an error. And not operating would be another. So this would be, again, that uh, failure from an interface level. So now we have those, those set. We actually have to pick what type of notifications or actions we want to take. Uh, we can send SNMP notifications. We can send syslog notifications, or we can actually do a relay for major, um, you know, major issue alerting. So I actually want to do that relay major, and we'll type in those same options. Link fault, uh, not forwarding, and not operating. Cool. So there we go. We have our profile configured. Let's exit back out of that. The next thing is to actually apply this alarm profile to a physical interface. So, uh, as you can see, I have the uh, FA01 slash uh, 1 interface uh, is what's connected. So I'll open that up, interface FA1 slash 1. And we can apply an alarm profile. And our alarm profile was test 1. So now if we do do show run int fa1 slash 1, we can see that alarm profile is attached. Now I have some other stuff added here. Uh, I'm basically saying don't send any BPDU messages or receive them. Uh, and I'm actually using port fast so that the port comes active right away. We'll actually remove, remove that then and I can show you a little bit more of uh, you know, the difference in experience. So, Anyway, let's end this, save the config. Now, as you saw earlier, the, um, the LED did not change state. With this, if I remove the connection, the LED does change state. If I reattach, almost instantly, the link is back up and uh, passing traffic. Again, spanning tree port fast is enabled, so that should be the case. Let's actually go back into that interface and do no spanning tree port fast. And let's also remove the um, the other options. Actually, I think we do those with this syntax, spanning tree, BPDU, filter, disable. Spanning tree, and there I actually error disabled the port because it's it's receiving BPDUs. So spanning tree, um, BPDU guard disabled. It'll shut down the interface, and when it's administratively shut down, you will get a green. You will get a green because you know it's administratively shut down. We know what the process is. Let's do a no shutdown. It's going to go back into red. It's up. It's you know administratively enabled, but not um, permitted to pass traffic. Goes green again, and the uh, you know detects that hey we're not actually forwarding because of, of spanning tree. Uh, as you can see here, the link light is still amber. When that clears, and we know that spanning tree is permitting to forward, it will go green again, and uh, the process will, will complete. So there we go, all green, all around. Let's do a show facility alarm, and uh, let's do status, show facility alarm. There's no status error messages currently. If we remove this link again, and do that same command, we see that it is in fact this interface, severity is major, it's a link fault, and uh, we get a time stamp with it as well. Probably should have NTP running here for a little bit more accurate timing. But uh, anyway, that is the basics of using a physical alarm for links.